Hi, and welcome to All About Adulting. I'm your host, Kimberly Buckley, and I'm the library manager at the Concord Library. I've been planning adulting programs at the library for a long time, and I was also a teen librarian for many years, so I feel like I have a lot of experience on this topic, and I hope that you will enjoy this mini series geared for high school and college students. It has been a really rough time for all of us these last few months of staying at home, and I hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy. Since we can't go to the library, I thought I would bring the adulting programs to you, and I hope that you enjoy this week's segment. Before we get started on our topic of the day, I want to share with you a question that many people ask me a lot. They ask me, what is adulting anyway? Well, adulting can mean a lot of things, and the word adulting is a verb. The real definition does mean to do grown-up things like get a job, pay your bills, or do your own laundry. But the number one point of adulting is that you are being independent on your own and being responsible. Okay, so now that we know all of that, we can move on to what I think is the more fun aspect of adulting, trying to figure out just what you need to know and how to apply it to your life. And here are some of the topics that we'll cover in this mini series. And you can see that some of these are very, very important skills for living on your own. And even though this might seem like a lot, you could totally do this and I'm here to help. So today's topic is all about jobs and job searching with a focus on resumes. We all know that we need to get a job someday and some of you might already have a job that you're working at. And I think jobs are really important because that's how we make our money, yeah. But also, the, by trying out different jobs, we get to find out what we really love to do. And in my life, I have been an event planner. I worked in a doggy clothing store. I assisted a pediatric dentist. And of course, I've been a librarian for a long, long time. And I saw this really funny meme yesterday that said, I'm looking for a job where I can be politely ignored left to my own devices, have unlimited Wi-Fi access, and lots of donuts and coffee. And yeah, I thought about that. I was like, that could be my dream job too. But in most cases, that won't really happen. But if you really do want a cool job, the first place you're going to need to start is with a resume. So I'm going to go over some of the basics of what you need to know to start your job search and process because this is really important part of getting the job that you really want. And hopefully looking at the different parts of a resume will help to make it a little easier for you. If we do a little work now to prepare for your job hunting journey, and if we are more aware of what is expected when making a resume, as well as how to wow those employers out there, you will be all set. So I've got some fun tips and tricks to share with you on this topic. So let's get started. So first things first, you should be looking at this question that Mr. Cat in the tie is replying to. As you can see, he has excellent skills and should totally get the job. Well, you will definitely be asked this question a lot in your job search. And if you think about it ahead of time and prepare your resume in a way that will help employers to see why they should hire you, you will already be ahead of the game. Employers are, are already thinking this question when they look at your resume because they only have a short window of time to assess whether or not you might be a good fit for the job. And they want to understand a few key things just from looking at your resume. And those things include whether you would be a good fit for their company and if you can be successful in the position and how you might be able to contribute to their short-term or long-term business goals. So what employers are really looking for in a job candidate? You're going to need to highlight your skills that fit the job description. You're going to want to make a list of your marketable skills like these. You might want to say good communication, able to work under pressure, self-motivated, can make decisions easily, strong leader, or good at conflict res resolution. Well, I think it's really important to focus on what a resume is and what it does for you in your job search. A resume is a complete listing of your work, experience, education, and professional training. And it can also include achievements, skills, and anything else that relates to the job that you're applying for. 
The purpose of a resume is to make a lasting impression on a prospective employer. So the answer here is yes, yes, and yes, you should always have a resume and it should be all about you and the great things that you can offer a company if they hire you. Think of your resume as your very own 30 second commercial spot. Hopefully you catch the hiring manager's attention within the first five seconds so they'll keep reading. Otherwise, you might your resume might end up in the no pile. So what do you put on a resume? Well, here's what you absolutely need to put on your resume. You need to put an objective or a short summary of your skills, your work experience or volunteer experience, your education, and definitely put your tech or computer skills. You can put optional things like awards, languages you speak, community service you've done, and even hobbies if they relate to the job. And don't forget to always have the correct contact information on your resume. One question I hear a lot is, how long should your resume be? Well, your resume should not be too long, and it, it should definitely pack a punch in showing what your worth is as best as you can. One to two pages is what is usually preferred by employers. Something you might want to try is a free resume builder. If you can find a resume builder site that is easy to use, that is great. I found these two, Resume Nerd and Resume Genius, and they are both free and are both super easy to use. They give you options for templates to use, and this totally helps because most employers want your resume to be plain and simple so they can read through it quickly. These resume builders also make the format easy peasy. After you pick your template, you just go through step by step, putting in your information and saving as you go. In less than 15 minutes, you will have an awesome resume to send out to all of the jobs that you want to apply for. So I, I just want to go through each of the things that you need on your resume so that you will know just in case anyone asks you about it. So first, I mentioned the objective, which comes after your name and contact information on your resume. And you should always start with an objective statement. So what does this mean? Well, it's basically that you are telling any prospective employer what your goal or work plan is and what your skills are and what you have and what you can bring to the table and what you would do if you could work for them. And it can be as simple as just stating your desired job title or it can show where you have been or what you hope to, where you hope to go in your future. When you write an objective, it clearly defines your goal customizes and customizes your resume just for you. So work experience is one of the most meaningful sections of your resume. What you will do in this section is come up with descriptions of your jobs, volunteer work, projects, and any other relevant experience that you have that can relate to the job you're applying for. Each description of your of your work history and volunteer experience should be clear and concise, yet descriptive. After reading your description, a prospective employer should know exactly what your responsibilities were and what skills you have developed and what your strengths are and, how, and what you achieved. You should use this format, job title, name of company, location of company, the dates you were employed, and a brief description of the duties or accomplishments. And don't worry about summarizing what the company or organization that you worked for did. It's more important that you describe what your responsibilities were and your accomplishments within that organization. So using action verbs. When you use an action verb, you give a strong and clear description of an action that you have taken when you're working at a job. And this is great because it will show what the result was for the company or employer that you worked for. Action verbs also help to describe the experience that you've gained through a job or volunteering or even from school projects and even doing chores at home. You could also start your resume with some bullet points with action verbs that are short and powerful, which will totally stand out to any potential employer. So basically for communication skills, instead of using talked, led, presented, or organized, you could wor use words like addressed, corresponded, persuaded, publicized, or reconciled. And for organizations, organizational skills, instead of using organized, ordered, or filed, you could use cataloged, executed, monitored, or operated.
Well, let's move on to some common mistakes that are made on resumes. So having a professional email address is essential in today's job market. Believe it or not, far too many people submit their resume or application using an unprofessional email address, and this can have seriously unfortunate effects on a job search. Don't shoot yourself in the foot before you even get in the door. 75% of resumes are thrown out because of this mistake. Use a something simple that includes your name and is easy to remember. It's usually best to avoid any kind of cutesy, edgy, or artistic email names. If you have something to do with a job, occupation, or expertise, and it still looks professional, that's fine. But the most professional email examples are just very straightforward. A few more common mistakes are spelling errors and typos. That is, one single spelling or grammar mistake might be the obstacle between you and your dream job. By having these kinds of mistakes in your resume, the recruiter or employer might think that the person is not taking the job seriously, and that is not a good thing. Before you send your resume, make sure you proofread it, and you can also ask someone else to proofread it for you too. Another thing is unreadable or bad fonts. The font you choose for your resume has a great impact on its readability, so it's not advised to use fonts that might be hard to read or fonts that are not too that are too fancy. You should try and use a simple font like Times New Roman or Ariel for increased readability on your resume. Another common mistake is having too much information, and too much information might distract the employer or recruiter from understanding how you can add value to their job opening. On average, the recruiter spends seven seconds reviewing your resume, so you need to make it count. Write short and concise sentences. And the last thing, common mistake, is wrong contact info. And this one is easy. What if a prospective employer reads your resume and is very excited to interview you, and then your contact information is not correct? That is a total bummer because they have no way of contacting you. I'm sad to say that you would miss out on this one. So where should you search for a job? Well, back in the day, and I won't say how long ago that was, you didn't apply for jobs on the internet. What you would do is you would search for a job in the want ads of the newspaper. You'd see an ad for a job opening, and then you would call on the phone, probably on one of those old rotary phones. I don't even think they make those anymore. Well, anyway, today there are a lot of people out there looking for jobs, and they all search online now. And the good news is that there are many different websites where you can look for jobs. Once you know which are the best job sites, you'll skate through to the finish line and get an interview and land that dream job fast. So here's a list of some of the best sites to search for. And we've got, we've got five of them up there, and they are on the list here. Indeed, Simply Hired, Zip Recruiter, Snag, formerly Snag a Job, um, and Monster, and there's also Job.com, Career Builder, Link Up, and US Jobs. And I, I think that the most commonly used sites are Indeed or Simply Hired. And, in, and I want to say Indeed is very easy to use. You can upload your resume and save it on their site. So when you apply for jobs, you can easily attach your resume. Um, so you might want to try out Indeed after you make your resume and try out applying for a job. So if you think about digital presence, um, I don't know if you've ever Googled yourself, but you could Google yourself and see if you were even, if you show up on there. But sometimes when you're applying for a job, an employer might also try to look you up online before setting up an interview. So if you want to, you can create a LinkedIn profile ahead of time, and this will let prospective employers learn more about you. In addition, your LinkedIn profile can increase your visibility online and can help you to get a job that you want. And this is a very important one. You need to keep your resume up to date. Anytime you have new information to add to your resume, you should update it right away to keep it fresh because your resume makes the first impression to whoever is reading it. And it is definitely the key factor in scoring you an interview. Always have it up to date and up to standards and looking professional. And adding in any new things like school accomplishments or volunteer or job experience will only make your resume better. 
and having an awesome resume can open up all kinds of job opportunities. So before we wrap this all up, I have a little bit of resume trivia for you. Now that you know how easy it is to make a resume, you should be able to answer these questions no problem at all. So here we go. One, a resume is an autobiography of your life. B, a detailed listing of your household chores. Or C, a complete listing of your work experience, education, and contact information for a prospective employer. Well, I hope that you would pick C because it is not an autobiography and it is not a list of chores. It is a complete listing of your work and experience and education. Two, the purpose of a resume is to find new friends or to establish your qualifications for a position you're applying for or to use a lot of paper. Well, I hope that you would choose the second one uh, it is not to find new friends, and it is not to use a lot of paper, but it is to establish your qualifications for a position you are applying for. The length of a resume should be one to two pages, six pages, or ten pages or longer. I hope that you would choose the first one, which is one to two pages. That is what is really the best format because Prospective employers do not want to read a six page. Or they definitely don't want a 10 page resume. So one to two pages should be your optimum amount. The four, the most important information on your resume is job experience, contact information, education, or all of the above. And yes, the answer would be all of the above. Those are all the most important things you need to have on your resume. And our last question here is what is the objective? Is it a summons for jury duty, a statement that defines your work goals, or a movie on Netflix? Well, if you guessed that it was a statement that defines your work goals, you got it right. So that's it for our trivia, and <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. So uh, I love this. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Dog, he's great. And I really could go on forever with all these great resume tips, and I hope that you have gotten some great ideas on what you'd like to do when it comes to making your own resume. You should try to create your own resume by using one of those free resume builders. It doesn't have to be for any specific job that you're looking for. You could just try it out for practice. And anytime you're trying something out, that will help direct you toward adulting. And that is a great thing and because it, it allows you to grow and move forward, which also helps you to be prepared for adulthood. Remember, it takes time to learn all this stuff. And also, there will be trial and error. And of course, there is always Google or YouTube if you really want to know how to do something. But really, just relax, though, and know that you're doing fine and that you'll be ready in your own time. Well, that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope that you enjoyed this segment of our mini series. If you have any questions at all or you want to know more about adulting, I'd be more than happy to answer. And I put my email address on here so you can always email me. I'm Kimberly Buckley, and this has been All About Adulting, and I'll see you next time.